Okay, we live. Let me uh, find this and share it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. It's okay, it just showed up. Here we go. Ah, I can't get on. Oh, let me do this. Public. Okay, now. Let's find you. Little Carter. I think it's this page. Yep, it is. Let's do this. All right. Let's let me know when you're ready. I'm good. I'm sharing it now myself. Okay. And I'm going to do a watch party. Okay, cool. Let me know when you, as soon as you got the watch party, we'll go ahead. All right, both are, both are up. All right. Hey, Jeremy Wilder. Hey, Amy Andrews, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Um, everybody, thank you for joining us. Um, I am here with a very, very special guest. Uh, Lady Tamil Curtis, she really should be called Reverend Tamil Curtis because she she is an awesome preacher as well. Um, mentor. At this point, I'm coming up with a new name called uh, Indie Artist Humanitarian. So Come I think that you fit, I think that you fit that bill as well. <laughs> and, uh, um, I don't even want to uh, halfway even try to describe all of what you do. So a lot of people know who you are, but tell us all that you are involved with right now on a daily basis. Oh, wow. Okay. So first of all, thank you for having me. And I like that indie artist. I'm going to have to put that into my bio. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. Right now, currently, I am actually gearing up for a new launch tomorrow which is the It's Lady Tamil agency, um, where it's basically me kind of like full-time now coaching and um, giving consulting to entrepreneurs, um, creatives, and what I call entrepreneurs, which are the musicians, um, the songwriters, the producers, the singers. Um, outside of that, I have a, a co-owner label. We here in our music group. Um, and we got some stuff that we're working on now with some indie artists for 2019. Um, outside of that, I have uh, Tactful, the um, marketing firm. And so I'm super excited. I'm currently work working with the um, artist out of Little Rock, Arkansas, Pastor Eric L. Alexander and the St. Luke Reunion Choir. And Phil, it is just Sunday morning church choir music from the first track to the last track. Um, yes, it is. Cracked um, number four on Billboard top gospel um, album sales. So I am excited about that. Um, we do have a mentoring program that we are working with um, with uh, young women um, from the inner city who are either from single parent homes or um, just in rural areas. And so I try to be an example of being able to make it out the hood per se, and um, encouraging them. So that's a little of what's on my plate on a daily basis right now. And um, how did you really get started with this gospel industry? I mean, what were some of your challenges in getting to where you are now? Um, first off, I didn't have a choice <laughs> in the, uh, you know, my mom, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. Uh, my mom is so entrenched in gospel from um, her days as a minister of music, which a lot of people don't know. My mom was a minister of music of a church wow. for over 30 years. So um, 
the, the whole aspect of singing and love singing and love um, being around the church environment came from her. And then she's also um, inducted into the Radio Broadcasters Hall of Fame. So my start in this came from shadowing her, per mm -hmm. se. And um, I actually got in trouble this particular year, my first year coming to GMWA. I think I was 17. And she was like, you are not staying home. You're coming with me. And I'm like, I don't want to be around all them old folk. It's going to be boring. Like, uh. But once I got there and I got in the room, like there were people at that time, like a Ruby Somerville Dixon and um, Toby and um, Mr. K from North Carolina that just gravitated towards me and was like, we see something in you. And so I think one of the biggest challenges for me initially was um, becoming my own person in this. I think mm. a lot of people, because of the backstory that I just gave and them knowing mom and different things of that nature, there was a certain level of expectation. And people didn't know my mom and I really agreed about what to do and how to do when it came to gospel music. Mm. Um, so she always gave me the mindset and the liberty and the freedom to be me and to speak my mind. But mm. a lot of stuff that I was saying, I'm like, mama, that's dated. Like, you know, why are they doing that? Why are you all doing this? Have you thought about this approach? Have you considered that approach? And so we would literally bump heads. Um, but I think that sharpened me enough to be able to stand on my own two feet, that if it's something that I believe in, um, I believe in it. And I know how to stand on it. And my thing is, listen, if I'll stand toe to toe with my mom about something, how much more will I do with you all about what I believe in and working with the independent artists and just helping to see them win? Um, what gave, why are you um, so helpful? Why have you decided to put your, put part of your uh, career into helping independent artists. Um, there are a lot of people, you and I know a lot of people in this industry and the industry is small, but not everybody and everybody's willing to, I believe in some way to contribute something, but why have you stuck your neck out um, in, a, in, a, uh, in a more unique way to help people? What made you decide to do that? Um, I'm an underdog. So I've always been the fan of the underdog. I've always been a fan of the misfit. I've always been um, a supporter and a cheerleader for um, the least of them that we think. And, um, and Phil, you know, like, we have come across some amazing talent that if they had the right engine behind them, they could be a Yolanda Adams. They could be a Fred Hammond. They could be a Kurt Franklin. And so... Um, in seeing that, and then just kind of some of the redundancy that the industry was having, my thing was, I want everybody that can to possibly have a chance in this. Mm. So that goes beyond you being talented, but also you knowing the business. Because um, you can be talented, you might have an amazing product, it's produced well, the musicianship is well. Um, song wise you have amazing lyrics but you have no business sense mm -hmm. so if I can like just help you even in one step further where you know to secure your streaming sites on your own or you know to um, have ISRC codes on your songs or you know to embed your music like if I can help one then I'm satisfied and I feel like I'm being successful in helping someone that actually needs it that's, that's one and God bless you for it. Um, you're coming to the IGA conference. You came last year. You blessed us immensely. What was your experience there? We, you know, we didn't. We don't have a lot of people that come to our conference. We're going to have more this year. I can tell you that already because our um, our our um, early bird registration went very very well. Um, but Good. what what was your experience? What was your takeaway from coming to the IGA conference last year? Um, that was my first year coming. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember when you and Earl um, first started, but that was my first year where I was actually able to come. And I was blown away because that was probably one of the first music conferences in years that I came to and the artist's primary goal was education and being empowered. They wasn't so much 
um, hell bent on performing. And, you know, you have industry people there, so we want you to hear our music and we want you to support our singles. But it was actually that educational piece. And from start to finish, because I kind of made myself a student, and um, mm -hmm. I enjoyed sitting in the sessions and learning, even myself. It was some things that I learned that I was able to immediately implement and say, hey, let's try this. I learned this here. And so to see that kind of vibe where these people genuinely are coming to learn. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're coming to be empowered. They're coming to be educated. They're coming to leave with deposits. And even in this last year, those that I started following and interacting with, I see how they immediately implement the education that they're learning. Mm -hmm. So it's not wasted time. You know, so I think sometimes, especially as an instructor or as a, a conference host, you might feel like, okay, I've put this together, I've planned this, but I don't see any call to actions. I don't see any implementation, but no, like the people genuinely take the information and they run with it and you can see the success of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, that was, that was Earl and I's goal from the beginning. And, um, and we're, and we're just excited that we've been able to make it to nine years. Um, this has been amazing. Um, and uh, we're going to be, at the Mount, y'all in Chesapeake. I'm not sure if you've been to the Mount before. You've been to the Mount. Uh, I have been. I have yeah, it's an amazing, it's an amazing place to come to. Uh, the beach is just 15 minutes away, so uh, there's there's plenty of time to sign up. Uh, of course, you missed the early bird registration, but it's still it's 149 dollars, um, and for under 200 dollars, you can get one of the greatest educations you can get, not just in gospel music, but in the music industry. Period. Great. And this year, uh, Lady Curtis, uh, our big focus is streaming. Uh, we are behind in streaming, whether you think you, you are or you aren't. If you aren't uh, one of the three or four conglomerates or, or a very, very uh, um, hustle-ready uh, uh, independent artist, you are behind. And so we are uh, understanding that this year, we, and we're not negating any of the other foundational concepts that we normally offer. And Tamil, can you just give us a little bit about what you have on your heart to share with uh, indie artists this year at the conference? Um, so I know the stream part is covered. That is something that's really huge. That's something that I've been implementing. Mm -hmm. Um, but something that I really want to deal with is actually, um, proper branding and brand identity and how to market that and capitalize on everything from your digital marketing aspect, which, you know, consists of your social media on to traditional marketing, you know, television, radio, um, and how it all plays a part. And I think, especially with independent artists, because we do see so many that um, they might mirror somebody else or they seem like they sound like somebody else or whatever. And it's your brand that establishes you and sets you apart. So how do you properly tell your story? How do you properly identify yourself when you're being authentic to who you are? How do you capitalize um, in a digital world? Because it didn't go anywhere. You know, those that were before us, Bill, they was like, oh, that's just going to be a fad. It's not going to last. You're still going to need, you know, terrestrial radio. You're still going to need print magazine. You're still going to, well, no, a lot of that has changed. And whereas they all have their place, if you don't have your hand on the pulse of the digital marketing aspect, it's really not going to be more than you being known in your city if you become known in your city. Because right. depending on the populace that you're in, it's so much music, it's so many artistry. So this year, I really want to concentrate on that brand identity and story and, and the digital marketing and how you can even monetize that if it's done properly. Like your YouTube, um, you know, how to set that up, how to push for your subscribers, how do you get shared, how do you get favored? Um, are you utilizing IGTV? which is amazing as a tool on getting the word out there because you'll have people watching your channel if it's tagged right that are not your friend. Mm. That makes them become aware of who you are and aware of your music and different things of that nature. So um, that's kind of where I'm leaning right now on how to um, encompass that into the focal point of the streaming so that we can actually maximize going into 2020 
everything that's been afforded to the independent artists and even the independent labels. Like, how do we um, help you guys be sustained if you don't have major distribution behind mm. it? Well, I'm, I I missed your class last year because I was running the hallways, but I would definitely be in there this year because I'm. Uh, there's always something to learn, and you have a wealth of information, a wealth of experience to go along with it which leads to uh, a, a potency in anybody's life who uh, is, is enduring to um, excel as an independent artist. Um, we want those of you all to know, you can go to www.indiegospelalliance.com, register now. If you can't afford to go, there are people that, are, that have been donating money to send independent artists to our conference. Now, if you don't know this is for real, you know it's for real now. Where I people believe in our conference so much that they are donating uh, scholarships for people to attend our conference. So you can go to IndieGospelLines.com and fill out um, the form. There's a scholarship application there for you to fill out. And if you really want to go and you can't pay for it, we will, we will comp your registration. Um, and you can get somebody to help you with your hotel and make a way like you made a way to do that record. Make a way to get to this conference to fill in the missing blanks in your career and in your ministry. We not just only deal with career, but we deal with your ministry. How do you navigate the two? And everybody I bring um, is very open and honest. It's one of the most open and honest situations you can ever, ever go to. So we want, we, we really, really want to encourage everybody, even if you don't know Earl, what is Philip and Earl done? You know, who are they? Just trust the, trust the engine. Go online, look up the engine, look up the clinicians. We got people coming from different people coming this year um, that's coming from all over the country to teach. And so, you know, trust the engine, make an investment in yourself. Don't be the same way next year that you are today. Um, Lady Curtis, we thank you so much for joining us. Um, you have been an extreme blessing. I have known you for many, many, many years now. And your mother has been a blessing in my life and in my career early on when I was getting started. And uh, how is she doing? She's amazing. She's she. Um, I, it looked like she popped in, but mom is actually on her way to Clinton, North Carolina, to be with uh, Mike Boykin for his um, anniversary. So okay. she's still out here. She's on the road. She's doing. She's still vibrant and feisty. And that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Anita asked for the deal. Um, she said, "When is it?" Well, I'll the say it's July. It's July the 11th through the 14th, July the 11th through the 13th uh, at the Mount in Chesapeake, Virginia. You can fly into Norfolk International Airport. You can fly into Newport News. You can just go straight to the website here. Though I got the website on the, this broadcast, indiegospellines.com. All the information is there. We have a lot of people coming. Uh, I have uh, for the first time. I'm going to be able to get Garrett Johnson on a Facebook Live so people can can find Garrett. Don't, don't do any yes. social media. Right. But he, has, he has agreed to do a Facebook Live. We're going to talk to him, Attorney Gary Johnson. We deal with your taxes. We deal with your accounting. We'll deal with, we, we, we deal with your label setup. We have a young man. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. He's coming from San Diego. He's a streaming expert. He's helping people and artists all across this country build their streams up. And so he's going to be teaching us on how to come together to build our streams up. Then there's a lady named Jennifer Turnbow coming from Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and she deals on a corporate level what's happening next with streaming and what we can do to get involved because not only do you need to know um, how to build your streams up, but you need to know what's coming next so you can be in position to take advantage of it. And that's been our big issue. We don't know what's coming next. Right. Uh, by the time we find out, it's too late. And we bragging about we bragging about cassette tapes and people and half the world is already playing CDs. So, you know, we got <laughs> we got to catch up. And the only way to catch up is through education. You can't catch right. up at home. You can't even catch up watching Facebook posts. I mean, we do the best we can trying to give you information on Facebook, but you need to be in the network. You need to be in the place. Um, coming up later today, uh, Brother Earl and I will be on here talking about the nominees for the IGAA Awards. That's coming up soon. And the reason why we created the IGA Awards, not because they're because we need another award show. We wanted to create something where people could win an award off of merit as an independent artist. Mm -hmm. uh, off of what you actually did. Not just how many votes you got. We do have one public voting category. So, but you'll find out more about that later. Tamil, um, is this, uh, I'm going to play just a, just 
it's a small game with you called myth or fact. Oh. Um, myth oh, or okay. fact. Oh. Okay. <laughs> y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Um, is it a myth that an that an independent artist at this point can make a living just being an independent artist? Is that a myth or a fact? I think it's both. Okay. Um, and I and this is why I say I think it's both. I think it's a myth because we are seeing independent artists that are very successful doing this. Um, they may not look like us, but they're independent and they're successful mm -hmm. doing this. Um, I think it's a fact because most who want a career in this have no type of business sense. They have no type of uh, wherewithal of what it takes. And they're so busy going, um, God said that I was to be an artist, but they haven't taken the time to find out what else God is saying so that that can be a, a reality. And so I think, it's, I think it's both. I think it will take some time where they can have a successful career at this and this is the only thing that they do. Um, but it definitely takes some work. And if they don't have the business, it's not going to work. So I think that's both. Wow, wow, wow. I'm trying, I, I was I'm trying, I was trying, while you were answering, I was trying to figure out how to phrase my next question, my next myth or fact question. But is it a myth or is it a fact? Is traditional gospel still alive and well? Fact. It's still very much alive. It's still very much well. Um, I think the issue is people are not giving and putting out and producing traditional gospel music. That's on a caliber of being able to compete with everything else that's commercially there. Um, a lot of traditional artists, they're okay um, mm -hmm. not having a UPC code on their project. They're okay if their music isn't embedded and when you put it in, it says track one, track two, track three. Um, they're okay um, doing what we might call the Chitlin circuit to survive, but they're booked every weekend. Like they're literally singing some plays every weekend and they are performing every weekend. Um, I think it's people like us and I refer back to Bishop, um, to Pastor Alexander and St. Luke Reunion Choir. Um, that is traditional church music. And so, Phil, the response has been, we've been waiting for something like this. We've been looking for something like this. We, we've been excited to hear a church project that's that. And it's not knocking praise and worship. It's not knocking those who may lean more towards CCM or the urban flavor but what do we normally do in a traditional church setting? The choir sings and they have church. And so I think as more traditional artists become open to the business, I think that we will see it in that regard as far as the business side is concerned. But it's not going nowhere. Choir music, quartet music, it, it's here to stay. Okay. Myth of fact, uh, people, uh, people are, or well, People are still buying CDs. Myth or fact? Fact. Good. Fact. Good. <laughs> Absolutely, positive, one hundred percent of fact. Um, me charting with the artist that I'm talking about, which is a mm -hmm. traditional church project, has been eighty five percent physical copies. So the last four weeks, I came in at twenty six, sixteen, fifteen, and this week at number four. 85% of those sales that have been allotted to us have been physical copies. Thank you for that. That's 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 great. I wanted that's that's dipping into the IGA a little bit, but I wanted people to mm -hmm. uh, Now, here is here is one I mean uh um myth of fact. Radio is friendly to holy hip hop music. Oh, that's a myth. That is a myth. I think <laughs> Um, well, let's let's break it down this way. I think traditional radio um, still has not gravitated towards it. And I mean, you, you consider somebody like a Lecrae who won a Grammy for best rap album, right? And this boy has done something that a Snoop Dogg or a Biggie 
did not accomplish. And they are two of the biggest worldwide secular rap artists. But this young man was able to garnish a Grammy for best rap album. And he was against secular artists, which means it's viable. It's there. And I think people are still very closed minded to whether they call it holy hip hop, um, Christian rap, whatever it is. Now, the flip side of that is we do have a lot of um, independent stations or um, independent radio networks who love it and they absolutely play it. So if you are a holy hip hop artist, it is imperative for you to know your market. Mm. Say that last part again. My bell was ringing in my school. But go ahead. Say that last part again. I said it's imperative when it comes to that holy um, hip hop situation that you know your market and what caters to your market because there are ready. And watch this. It's actually some AC stations mm. that love holy hip hop and mm. they will throw it in there. It's no different than. Um, how early on when um, our urban contemporary kind of phased in and we had um, AC stations that was playing BBMCC. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. the same thing for the holy hip hop and it's a matter of really grinding or making sure that you have somebody on your team that knows this because every artist won't know and it doesn't matter if you're holy hip hop, um, quartet, choir, independent artist, whatever the case is, you may not know everything but you best believe whoever's on your team and they're saying that they are a manager or they're doing marketing, they need to know the areas to tell you to target to make sure that you're capitalizing and maximizing your reach. That's excellent. Look it up. If you all want to get some more information, you need to come to the IGA conference. Um, or you can you can reach out to Lady Tamil Curtis yourself. Tell, tell us how to uh, get in touch with you. Absolutely. So um goes back to that whole brand thing. My um tag is universal. It's it's Lady Tamil. I T S L A D Y T M I L on Instagram, on Twitter, on Periscope, even on Snapchat. It's universal. Um LinkedIn and Facebook is Tamil Curtis. Um and that's why everything that I'm tagging, trademarking is that it's Lady Tamil so that people will be able to find me. Um, the new website will be up at noon tomorrow um, Eastern time, which is itsladytamil.agency, where we will now be offering um, coaching courses and communities, especially for creatives and our introverted creatives, um, where you can come and you can kind of learn and you can kind of glean. Um, I would love to have Phil to come and teach one of my master classes for you guys. So it's not just me. I'm literally pulling in help um, in various fields, various in, um, aspects of this from a creative standpoint of people that I consider to be successful that can help you possibly navigate better on a course to success. Thank you. Well, y'all know how to reach it now. I wanted to go back just real quickly and then we'll end this. Uh, were you? I know you were there. I just didn't see you. But I don't know whether it was at the Stella Awards or whether it was at the GMWA, it was one year. We I'll go back to Lecrae when Central South gave him an award. I believe he outsold Marvin Sapp and nobody. He had not. He had no radio airplay. GMW. Were you there in the room? It was, it was GMWA. Yeah. So just letting you letting y'all. You can. It can be done. I mean, it can be done. I mean, he was killing it then, and he's not nowhere near. He was nowhere near the media success that he is now. But uh, you know what ties into a lot of what we've been talking about on the live today. He's been able to capitalize for a, a, quite a few ways. A lot of people don't know that Lecrae is actually an amazing teacher. And he has written a cur curriculum that has helped um, various Baptist entities with their youth. Mm. So how do you reach? How do we reach our young people, how do we phase this in? How do we implement? So everything down to um, what we call text chains now, um, the social media aspects, the group chats, like he literally has put together and pinned something to help churches 
maximize that along with singing. So just imagine artists. And I, I know everybody wants to be an amazing singer. You anointed God called you for this. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But what else do you do that you can tag on to that? If you are a teacher, can, can you help even teach or instruct? Um, there are churches that are still trying to find a way to phase into the whole praise and worship aspect. So what does praise and worship really look like? How do you get the congregation to actually participate in this where you're not looking like you're doing a concert? Like there's so many other ways where at that point your music becomes your business card. And it's mm. your other streams and your other avenues and, and the other ways that you can tap into the Christian community that can help you do that. Because look, and this is off the top of my head, you all are getting something totally fresh. So feel free to cash at me after this if you think it's okay. <laughs> so watch this. Um, I see Leon Richardson is on here. I'm going to use him as my example. Leon Richardson is an amazing artist, Phil. Oh, mm. My God, but he's a teacher. Yeah. Right? So him being a teacher and him knowing music like he does, he can put something together on the lines of um, how do we properly pastor our minstrels? Right? Because there's been a whole thing that's going on about musicians being paid in the church. I even heard something that's super ridiculous. I'm not going to call any names, but there is a bishop who happens to be an artist also who feels that his paid musicians, paid musicians that are not members of his church are supposed to tithe into his church. Why am I tithing to you and I'm a member of another church? So mm. you might put together something that helps to, to bridge that gap between pastors and ministries because every pastor has not gone that road. We see a lot of gospel artists that become pastors, but everybody has not been a singer. Everybody has not been an artist. So you might be able to pin something and from pinning that, you go and teach the workshop. So if you're going right. to teach a workshop during the day or you teach the workshop on a Saturday, well, guess what? Since I'm coming, can I do a concert on Friday or can I do a concert on Sunday, Saturday night to coincide with the workshop that I'm doing? What does that do? That opens you up to a whole new artist. It creates a, another aspect of your stream of income, whereas if you only sing in front of 50 people, it don't matter because you've already been paid to come to the workshop. Right, right. I mean, look, we could do this all day long, but thank you. <laughs> thank you are just, it's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful, and I thank you so much for giving us that. And 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 what's the guy's name when he's, he, he said his name is Leon? Leon Richardson. He and and amazing he's from the st louis um like east st louis area centralville up in up in there up in the um gateway area feel he is absolutely phenomenal and mm. and he's an artist that knows artistry mm, yeah mm -hmm. he, and he, can, he can and he can and the reason why i say he knows artistry and he knows how to perform i've mm. watched him in various settings where he's gone from being able to get up behind somebody else and flowing with what they sung, mm -hmm. his agenda, and carrying on with that, or flipping to a hymn because that's what the moment calls or that's what the crowd mm -hmm. is calling for. They don't know him or his music. So he is someone that has um, almost perfected the artistry aspect of this. And and that's, that's another thing to talk about. But before I talk about the artistry, the, the choir project, um, Give the name again. I listen to it. I love it. I really do. I really like it. What's this the guy's name again? It's Pastor Eric L. Alexander presents the yes. reunion choir. The um, title of the project is called The Journey. Yes. And I, I even started watching. I even started watching some of the other videos of just church stuff that he's doing. Yeah, I, I got. Yeah, I was like this. This church all the way here. This, this make you feel like down home right here. So, exactly. Yeah, I, home, North Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's church from beginning to end, especially that old school medley. Like, they mm -hmm. literally went back um, to a Dorothy Love Coach tune. Mm. It's not too many people that even know that name. Right, but right. One that, that wrote that song and made that song popular. You know, we see a whole bunch of, you know, things. Um, it was online probably about three weeks ago. There was a young musician 
who was like, I'm today's years, uh, years old when I found out that Anita Wilson did not um, make Jesus will. Mm-hmm, as the, in, <laughs> the first artist. Right, right. Either, either I'm super smart in gospel or I'm old to know that that was a remake of even something from the Barrett sisters or from Cleveland. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, so I think we got a lot of educating that we got to do for this new generation. Well, that Look, educate, I mean, I think the new generation is finally catching on the hymns. Um, they've seen people like me, others play hymns. And I've seen a lot of them playing hymns now. Um, I just want them to kind of learn the hymn as it is so you can properly embellish it so we'll actually know what's going on. Um, but the whole thing about, uh, you know, them knowing gospel music education is a concern of mine as well. The want to know it um, is is an issue. You know, not I don't want to force it down your throat. I want you to know it. I mean, you got Chicago, you got Bob Merovich who knows everything about gospel. And you, got others, you got others who know a lot, you know, but you have to want to know it because it will help you in shaping how you do what you do with your career in ministry. Um, and to, you know, for a lot of people who didn't know the Barrett sisters had, had done that song previously, I was fortunate to play it with them when they used to come to the DC area. Um, so, I mean, you know, um, so it's just knowing that kind of thing, being up on it, being able to talk to different crowds about different things, because there's a strong contingency of people when they think gospel, they don't think the modern day gospel in the last 10 years, they're thinking Mahalia Jackson. I mean, I went to Salt Lake City. I was on the elevator and somebody asked me, was Mahalia here? I said, no, nah, Mahalia's been dead for, for about 20 years. <laughs> but they wanted to know if Mahalia was. Listen, I said, I'm I mean, glad they asked. <laughs> and not me. Because, <laughs> my God, I don't know what <laughs> is, is, is Mahalia here? I'm like, Lord have mercy. What are you listening to is at Mahalia home? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> but the. the the whole the whole thing about artist development, you know, Kevin James used to used to, used to uh, used come to our conference for many years, and he used to holler every every year, artist development, artist development, artist development, and only the way that he could do it, and uh, and we and it finally hit me that he was right, um, he was right, um, a lot of there are a lot of artists, in fact, the majority of independent artists have no clue on how to perform. They have no clue. Well, I and think part of that you, is because we do have a lot of worship leaders. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this in, in a bad way, so so please don't take it as such. Um, mm-hmm. If you do, I don't have an issue with correcting you. If you feel the need to come to me, um, we have a lot of worship leaders who are becoming artists, and we don't understand that what we're what we do in a church setting. Is mm-hmm. not how we conduct ourselves on stage as an artist. The, mm-hmm. the root word of that is art. Mm-hmm. So there's a performance, there's a presentation, there's a projection that needs to happen. If you don't get up, and especially if you're like the sixth person on the on the program, talking about some everybody stand to your feet. No, I don't. What am I standing up for? What What have you done? Sing me to my feet. Don't Don't command me. Just mm-hmm. To my feet, sing me to my feet, present something, project something that's worthy enough to make me stand up and want to clap and want to engage and want to participate in what it is that you're singing. So, I think with A and R kind of becoming obsolete, and then that transition of a lot of, of worship leaders and church singers coming into the industry, artist development got lost, yeah. Yeah, you're right, and 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 I, I wholeheartedly agree with all of it. And I think I'll, and I love it. And I, the other thing is this: they're not being mentored. Like I I can I can watch Kurt Franklin and Ty Tribute. Um, they may get up on the stage and talk, but watch out for the 15 song medley that's coming after it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they can they can wow you and 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 still minister to you at the same time. And I think people are dismissive of the fact of the truth that regardless of what you do in ministry, there is some entertainment involved. There is some personality involved. I mean, some of the greatest, some of the greatest preachers I know are great personalities as well. And they're and great. Think, yes. And to get up on stage and tell about, I'm not here to do this. I'm not here to do that. You just boring us out the, out, out the church or out the auditorium or wherever we are. And I well, think the other thing. Especially if it's a ticketing event. Phil, I've, 
will get up and walk out. If I have paid $20 to come to a, a program, you're absolutely here to entertain me. Mm -hmm. don't, don't Holy Ghost and your Jesus doesn't know how to conduct yourself in this type of environment. You don't need to take these type of gigs. Yeah, People, you are like th there is an entertainment factor and we 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 mask not being professional behind being ministry minded right right but even if we look at the word first of all the greatest performer that has ever been and ever will be is God himself mm -hmm. anytime he can open up his mouth and say let there be and there was that's a performance anytime mm -hmm. he can out of his mouth send plagues into Egypt so that, you know, what needs to happen happens, that's a performance. Anytime that Jesus was able to perform a miracle to let people know who he was, that is a performance. So if we're supposed to be greater than him, that means that we should be able to perform in our various avenues and on our various platforms in ways that please him and brings him glory. Period. That's right. That's right. And with that being said, there's nothing else to be said about that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, uh, uh, people who watch, people who watch this broadcast, feel free to share it all over the Internet. Um, it'll be up for those of y'all who are part of my email club. Uh, you'll see it on the email. There'll be multiple opportunities to view this. But we want to invite you to invest in yourself. That's the biggest. That's what comes out of this. Invest in yourself. Um, the one thing I've learned is that if you do that, and get you a, a mentor and a coach and people around you who care about you and get your team together, you will, un success will come to you. You won't even Absolutely. have to worry about it. It will come to you. Absolutely. I mean, you have no idea the opportunities that are out there. And some of them have nothing to do with the gospel music industry. But just because you are positioned yes. to be, you know, you and you have done the things, that, the necessary things that you need to do then success will come to you. And so Lady T Mill, thank you once again for joining us. Looking thank forward you to you coming in July. I'm probably gonna see you twice because the GMWA is here in Washington, DC. And we're getting ready. We're, we're, we're feverishly trying to get ready to, uh, to get things together here in the GMWA, but gonna see you in Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, with that being said, I hope you have a blessed rest of the day. You and also, everybody, and hug Stephanie. Hey. I sure will. And tell folks one more time how to reach you. You can find me at It's Lady Tamil, I T S L A D Y T M I L on Instagram, Twitter, Periscope. I'm Tamil Curtis here on Facebook and LinkedIn. And you guys can go to my new website that is officially launching, but there is a landing page that's up tomorrow, which is www.itsladytamil.agency. That whole brand thing. We're not doing dot .com or dot .org. We're doing dot .agency where you can come. And it is a place to be coached. Even on this that we're talking about, we have something that's that we're setting up and gearing up for creatives and what I call art entrepreneurs, which are the singers, the songwriters, the musicians, and the producers. All right. With that being said, everybody tune in a little bit later on today. We're going to be talking about the IGA Awards. Got some exciting announcements. And if you need a scholarship, if you can't afford to go, if you know if you know somebody that could benefit from this, go to IndieGospelLines.com, fill out the scholarship application. If we have more scholarship opportunity, if we have more scholarship applications than we have uh, people giving, people will give more just to see you succeed. Amen to that. God bless everybody. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.